Okay, we're ready to talk about involution of the postpartum bovine uterus. Involution means some structure was large in a normal sense, and I'll, I'll uh, explain that a little bit later. And then it undergoes a reduction in size to get ready for another functional event. There's two main tissues in the cow that undergo involution in the cyclic matter. The uterus, it enlarges during pregnancy, but then it has to come back down to a very normal size. And then the mammary glands undergo involution when the cow is dried up, when she's no longer milking. There's a big mammary gland, and then it's got to involute. And involution is always a healthy process, especially for a mammary gland. They have to get back to normal size, repair tissue before they're ready for another lactation. But the same with the cattle, the uterus. You have to get the normal size because if it doesn't come back to the normal size, it's probably not going to get pregnant again. Stella, I'm over here, kiddo. Come over here. Okay, so here it is. Now remember, I stole all these images off the internet because I couldn't find mine. I mean, I've taken all kinds of pictures. This is a pregnant uterus in a tray. I'm not, they, too bad there's not a ruler here. But if you have a full term Holstein calf, it, you know, it fit on about half of this table up here. I mean, like two by two or two and a half by two and a half feet. And it's all, the pregnancy occurs on the same side as the CL. So one horn is always going to stretch bigger. The other horn is still going to be a little bigger than normal because some of the placenta drifts over there and expands that. But the walls of the uterus get thinner during pregnancy, okay? And I'll, I won't talk really about maybe, maybe I have one slide about rectal palpation to determine pregnancy. And one thing you do is like at 35 days, you can go in there and on the side that's the pregnancy side, it's thinner and you can actually do what's called a membrane slip. You slip the, the placenta slips through your fingers per rectal. Okay, so that's a pregnant uterus. The only other reason it would be this big would be if it was filled with pus. And that's called pyometra. And I can't remember if I left a picture in it or not. It doesn't matter. Okay, I just want to re refresh your memory. Here's the normal non-gravid uterus. And that's the big one. So you can kind of see it's really going to get enlarged. I want to refresh your memory about those caruncles because I don't think I spelled it before. Little bumps. When an animal is born, it has them. They might be very hard to see, but like a heifer that's never had a pregnancy, you can open up the uterus and count them. Let's say 80 plus or minus per horn. The placenta has to attach there. It doesn't show anything placenta. There's an ovary, look at the blister. So that's a follicle. There's one egg in there. If you took your needle in a syringe, you could pull the egg out and put it in a Petri dish and find it with a dissecting microscope. The other ovary is way over here, so it's out of view, okay? That's the normal. There's usually longitudinal lines. Look at those lines there. And the cervix is back here someplace. And the cervix is famous for being closed, and it fills itself with mucus. Because the, the cervix is the gatekeeper to the uterus. And if you have a channel, you can't make it airtight. But if you fill that anything else with mucus, then nothing can get up into the pregnancy. OK, so then. The caruncles are on the uterus. They're always there, whether the animal's pregnant or not. But they do grow, but on the placenta, the buttons on the placenta are called cotyledons. And this isn't a very good picture because I blew it up and you can see. But you can see round structures. And each one of those would attach to a caruncle on the uterus. And I've, I think I've got a diagram where all the blood vessels would come together and make an umbilical cord, umbilical cord into the fetus. So here's a little drawing. And here's the caruncles, and too bad they didn't spell that right. But anyway, the caruncles are on the uterus, the cotyledons are on the placenta, and together you call them a, <laughs> no, you call them a placentome, not something crying. And they don't really show it well, but all those blood vessels come together to make the umbilical cord. This is okay, we're doing fine. Now when the non-gravid uterus is up here, but as pregnancy goes on, it sinks down into the abdominal cavity. Notice this is on the right side of the animal. Sometimes if a, an animal is very pregnant, you can bump the fetus. You bump the right side of the abdominal wall and you go like this, and then the fetus bumps back at you. They've done that before. You bump and then it bumps back down here. Okay, I just want to show you that the big uterus is dropping. It's not going forward. 
It has to drop. It's so heavy. Oh, here it is, transrectal palpation. I just wanted to say you, you can do it as early as 30, 45 days, and there's a risk of embryonic mortality, and this word means it's caused by the treatment that's being given or the procedure that's being given. Okay, so anyway, you do the membrane slip, but you don't really know if the fetus is viable. You know there's membranes there, but you assume everything's okay. Anyway, then look at this. Compared to cattle, must have been from a buffalo site, rectal palpation of buffaloes must be gentle as the rectal mucosa is more fragile and bleeding. Cattle, you really almost don't have to worry about tearing rectal tissue. Buffalo you do, and horses you do. Cattle are pretty stout, so that's not really a problem unless you're, you know, you're not doing it right. Okay, so involution is a reduction in the size of the uterus. It decreases in size faster at the beginning. You know, there's some uh, microscopic things you can measure. But look at this, the diameter of the gravid horn is halved by five days after calving. That's a pretty, that's substantial boom. And its length is halved by 15 days. So from that, you know that involution takes more than 15 days, right? I mean, I'll tell you about it. Anyway, you can rectally palpate, but I'm, not, I'm gonna skip. Because somebody watching this on the internet, where I'll put it, they can pause these things and read it. I'm going to scramble, scramble on. Anyway, here's uterine length, uterine weight. Things are dropping. 20, by 20 days, it's pretty good. But usually, you want to wait at least 30 to 40 days to have a good involuted uterus. Okay. And then, of course, there's all kinds of loss of this fluid. And I can't remember if I, I have one more picture, but it's not very good. But there's stuff coming out, and it's lochia. That's the discharge after giving birth. And remember that metesterous bleeding? It, was very, it looked like blood, pure blood, and it is. This lochia is a mix of necrotic tissue, blood, maybe some amniotic fluid, and so it looks different. It's present soon after birth, but if it's there at 30 days after birth, that's a warning. That's not good. <coughs> So here's some, I got a way better picture than this, but this is all I could find. So this would be like either be behind the cow when she's laying down, or you might just see it and there's no cow around. Hopefully you know who's doing this. Because this would be normal five, ten days after calving, but if a cow is in estrus or 60 days after calving, this is a sign of trouble. So the same sign can be interpreted as good, normal, or trouble. Okay, so then the cow starts ovulating in dairy cattle before they're really ready to be pregnant again. So you don't want to breed them on their first what's called postpartum estrus. Sometimes they even don't show signs of estrus at that first heat. But it would be good to know when it is because they should be coming back into heat. But anyway, the, you know, obviously the first average is about 21 days. I've had cows do that nine days after calving. And some, maybe the first time, 50 days after calving. And horses, just a little injection here, sometimes they do it nine days after foaling. And what's that called? Say it louder. Full heat. And you can breed a horse then and sometimes get a pregnancy. Question over here. What do you think a good voluntary rating period is? Well, I would say 50 to 60 days for both beef and dairy cattle. Because, you know, beef cattle and dairy cattle, inside, they all look the same. It's just their reproductive characteristics are different because of the way we manage them. But I'd say definitely about 50 days. Okay? Okay, so here we go. During this, <laughs> we're almost done, Stella. We'll be all set. There's a lot of bacteria that has to be gotten rid of, and it's phagocytosis by leukocytes, of course. Okay, I'm ready for questions. It's pretty close, isn't it? Excellent. Okay, questions in, about involution of the bovine uterus. All of the large animals do the same, basically. Horses have to do this, goats do this, sheep, swine. But you got to be careful because, do you know what? Not all animals have the cotyledons and caruncles. That's only the ruminants. And those buttons have to come apart at the time when the placenta leaves. And the one thing I didn't mention, if those things don't come apart, you have retained placentas. And one of the worst things you can do is try to pull it out with too much force, the placenta. 
then you're going to tear up the caruncles, and then the next pregnancy, they're not going to be as good to give blood uh, nutrients, I should say, to the fetus. Here we go. I remember cattle, cybers, really, it's horses, but I think it functions the same way. There was a question that was brought up in one of my other classes, like when you pick up the placenta, make sure it's all there. There was something else on the placenta, like there was something else attached to it, but it was completely normal. I think I know what you're talking about. I just can't refer to. The, I can't remember the name of it. Sometimes there's like this structure. Anybody can help us on that? Because I think people, some people thought, "Oh my God, it was a that never lived." Yeah. It just sat there. Yeah, yeah. And I and I can't it's really not. remember what it is now. The thing is, all those the placenta always leads to an umbilical cord that would have been attached to the fetus, you know, the newborn. But that's probably not what you're referring to. Maybe Monday I'll show you a picture. I think I know what you're talking about, but I can't remember what it's called. Sometimes it's bigger or some more visible in animals than other animals. Other questions? <laughs>